thanks for joining us. We are back at you as we are every week with Mary Forum Radio and Mary Videocast. And I am Carol Angela Davis, one of your co-hosts, along with Angela Hardiman. And she'll introduce herself when we, I get a chance to chat with her. But we always take a little bit of time periodically throughout our journey, shall we say, and what a journey it has been, to talk about what it has taken to bring this information of medical marijuana all across the state of Florida, the third most popular, popular state with so many racial groups and so many ethnicities and so many languages. And we've had to serve them all without a blueprint. So I want to talk to you first about the communication strategy. That was my area of influence. And uh, wow, the first thing we decided to do was to create a strategy that met the consumer where they were. We decided, okay, guess what? We don't know if you prefer radio or television or podcast or social media or print. We don't know and we don't care. We're gonna create something for everybody so that no matter how you want your information, we could get it to you on medical marijuana and we could get it to you in a format that was most palatable for you. So that was the first thing we did with our communication strategy, uh, kind of a meet you where you are at a time that is most convenient for you in the way that is most convenient for you. And so we hope that we have served you. We've been able to scale that so that it could go into the local community, the local neighborhood, towns, counties, cities, and all over the state, frankly, uh, of Florida. We should also tell you, I'd like you to know that it's, it is so multifaceted. One of the things that I've enjoyed the most is the podcast, frankly, because we've had a chance to interview the movers and shakers uh, all over the state of Florida and to really get an understanding of how cannabis fits into your life through the lens of their perspective, be it a pharmacist or whomever it was. And that's why Angela Hardiman's going to jump in because she's going to tell you about the strategy she devised to make sure that we are bringing you the latest information from the most important stakeholders. Angela? Yes, thank you, everyone. I'm Angela Hardiman, the Public Affairs Liaison for the initiative. And it is no secret that we've, we've said time and again that community, community engagement and communications went hand in hand. So it's been a pleasure working with Carol Angela Davis. Um, on, the on the community engagement front, however, we started with community forums. I have a background in Chamber of Commerce and Economic Development, and I thought that the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk to the people. And I thought it was important that we do that in a horizontal fashion instead of a vertical fashion. The, the industry is vertical, but we were going to do it horizontal. It was important not to do this top down, but to foster a dialogue with community members um, because the, you know, going into this, you would think there were, there could be tremendous amount of misconception that weed, marijuana, or whatever you want to call it is real because it's a pervasive topic. And, you know, everything you saw was medical marijuana, blah, blah, blah. So we didn't want the general community to, first of all, to not, to, to understand the parameters of what medical marijuana was. That is, you know, you have to be recommended to take it from a certified physician and otherwise. Um, Fostering the dialogue has been wonderful. Um, we learned a tremendous amount. Number one, we learned that the community yearned for the information. Uh, the experts thanked us and applauded us for knocking on their door to provide this information. And to literally, educate literally, literally, on their door. literally, Angela. Those literally. One, one doctor said, no one is doing this. Thank God, fam, you is doing it and doing it in this fashion. Um, Where did you go and get the experts, the, 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 the mix that you got? Oh, sure. The, the uh, stakeholders were wonderful. And of course, that was, you know, a little easier with the medical professionals. Obviously, the doctors and the pharmacists understood the need to get this information out. Talking to law enforcement and talking to the faith-based leaders, they were reticent because, number one, there's stigma still attached to it. And also, law enforcement thought, okay, is this an opportunity for me to get beat up <laughs> at this form? You know, this is because there's a social justice component to this. But the end result of building that network, and we have a tremendous network with the experts, uh, uh, the, the end result of that is them thanking us and, and asking us to come on again. I mean, some of them are even involved on our advisory council. It's so interesting because now we, 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 can't, we have so many guests that want to be on the show that we've actually had to create. We had one show that was a half hour once a week. We had to go to an hour once a week so that we could accommodate all the people who have something to say to the community about you know, medical marijuana. It's very interesting. Absolutely. And then Carol, I'll just say lastly, you know, the tools that we use obviously in doing this similar to, to communications and you were a part of that is making sure that our collateral materials were multilingual. You know, we did the first fact sheet and made sure that it was in English, Spanish, Haitian Creole, and French. Um, we understand the need for the outreach and actually this is so exciting that we have the extension of our team on here to talk about the expansion and the other areas that we're doing, but we understand that very well um, and we'll continue to do it. 
build yeah. partnerships and Absolutely. And, you know, when, when, as you said about the communication strategy, I mean, we had to have our tentacles everywhere. And so, you know, you can't do it all yourself. No. Um, I've been in media for too many years to count on this broadcast, that's for certain. But we had to go out and get other people who we knew were very, very good at their craft and bring them in to help us out. And we brought, uh, we went right to 623 Strategies with Charles Cherry. Yes. Charles, thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Glad to be a part of it. Uh, my, my company, uh, uh, 623 Management, is an ad buying agency. My background, actually, I've got a 40-year career in journalism uh, from uh, as an undergrad at uh, Morehouse College uh, in, in journalism. From there, uh, went to the University of Florida with a Juris Doctor and a Master of Business Administration, second person to get out, actually second black person to get out, third person overall to get out with both degrees at the same time. Uh, spent about 40 years in- uh, Only a in Morehouse journalism. man can do that. I'm sorry, I have to interject that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we went from there. I was a former prosecutor, had my own practice. My brother uh, and I actually decided to go into uh, media and, and at the height of, of our, the, the growth of our business on uh, 12 radio stations spread across three states, um, 11, uh, uh, 10 FMs, 2 AMs, plus two, two statewide newspapers. So my family has been in, in journalism and broadcasting for 41 years. Uh, with our oldest property, which is the Daytona Times. We launched the statewide uh, newspaper, the Florida Courier, which is the largest single statewide black uh, media outlet uh, in 2006. And so from that experience is, is when, when I was uh, approached about coming on board, it was, it was easy for me to do that, given my, my background and experience, uh, both on the legal side as well as on the business side, and knowing that a lot of the folks who are influencers in, in, uh, in minority communities are not measured. They're not measured by arbitrage. They're not, they're not measured uh, uh, um, um, by, by any of the, the traditional kinds of media measurements, but they still have influence. We know them, we work with them, we know who they are. So that's the, the sort of experience and the understanding that I've brought to this project. And uh, it's, it's, I'm, I'm just so happy to be involved. The sky's the limit. And uh, I think what you all have also found out is that there's a yearning for the knowledge of, of an understanding of cannabis, both on the legal side as well as on the medical side. And so we're happy to, to do everything that we can to, uh, to spread that message, that positive message and, and the, the message of knowledge about it and so that people can make their own decisions uh, throughout uh, non-minority communities throughout the state of Florida. It's so true. And you know, an interesting thing, and Charles, we're just so honored to have you on board. Your deep knowledge of media has been so yeah. helpful to us in terms not not just from the standpoint of being a a person who owns a buying firm but also a person who has owned radio properties print properties who really understands uh, not only ethnic markets but particularly african-american uh, consumer which of course we know is one of the biggest buying if not the biggest buying group uh, in yeah. the country and we had to go and get someone like you because we understood immediately we're starting to get calls from all over the nation people who wanted this information people who we needed to do, who needed to understand all about medical marijuana because they have, uh, shall we say, picadillos against uh, buying marijuana for many reasons, the war on drugs being one of them, and we have to really educate them. And I should say that just, uh, you know, it's interesting, I'm a lawyer, Charles is a lawyer, and our next person, Cheryl Murray Powell, is also a lawyer, and that legal expertise has been very helpful to us in terms of structuring a campaign uh, that we knew would not only work, but we know what the pitfalls might be going down the road from an advertising or media standpoint. And we've been able to, uh, you know, to be able to uh, create a strategy uh, that kept those in mind from day one. But Cheryl, tell us, as you have such a long career uh, in cannabis law. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you, Carol, for that introduction. Really great to join the team with you and Angela. Ellen and I are, we're going to be hosting a lot of fantastic content. So just to give you a little bit of background about myself, I'm a cannabis and agricultural attorney. I'm rated one of the top 12 cannabis attorneys in the state of Florida. And I'm on a number of organizations, a number of boards. But, you know, what really makes um, me excited is the fact that we are focused on education and knowledge. And just like you, uh, you spoke about, Carol, there's a tremendous amount of stigma in our community with regards to cannabis and um, the use of medical marijuana. So um, we're here to fill that gap. Um, FAMU's done a fantastic job to date, and a lot of people are recognizing that there's definitely a buzz around the programming from Mary. Um, as far as um, what's happening in the state of Florida, we're not in session currently. We were really hoping that last session we would see some uh, strategies around 
breaking up that vertical integration. So we weren't successful, but we are encouraged. And constitutionally, it's the Department of Health that's really ultimately responsible for the medical marijuana program. Um, and we're looking for them to come out with a new round of applications. I think the greatest travesty is the fact that there has only been one round of applications uh, for the state of Florida since the inception of the program. And that is absolutely ludicrous. Um, there's no reason that we're still in that same posture. I'm also the executive director of the Black Farmers and Agriculturalists of Florida. Um, so there's a Black Farmers license that has been um, identified. Uh, there is a lot of litigation regarding that. And that license still hasn't been given out. So, you know, as, as they say, we mark on. But that's where the lobbying efforts come in. So I spend a lot of um, my time with my clients and also with my advocacy organizations working on legislation from one state to the other. And I spent most of my time in my home state of Florida. So next session, I'm gonna be right there in Tallahassee prompting some decisions. Uh, even, even in between session, I spent a lot of time um, speaking to legislators. I, today I was speaking with uh, Representative um, um, Anika Umfroy, um, whose family. Um, I also spoke to Representative Chevron Jones today. So we keep the discussions going with our lawmakers, whether we're in session or not, just because we want them to understand what a patient looks like and that the patients are their actual constituents. And those two in particular have been extremely supportive, along with uh, Senator Bobby Powell and Senator Rusan, uh, very supportive of the programming, very supportive of diversity within the program. Another area of outreach, I was going to say another area of outreach, which I'm so glad that um, you, Carol, and Angela emphasized, um, as well as Charles, is making sure that we are reaching out to our rural communities. Um, this is an underserved area of our population. Fortunately, we had some really great guests. We already started taping for this season of the Mary program. I'm super amped for the audience to see our interviews with the Black farmers and agriculturalists. We have Dr. Latricia Wilson, who's the vice president. We have um, physicians who, emphasize, um, who are also horticulturalists like Dr. Jeffrey Block, who also wrote the actual um, uh, guidelines for physicians and the training for physicians. So we have a lot in store for you. We're going to touch Caribbean, we're going to touch um, rural um, areas, and we're going to touch the law. So thank you for the opportunity, and I'm looking forward to working with all. Absolutely, Cheryl. That's why, you know, you're here is because, you know, you know that rural community, you know those Black farmers, you yes. under, we know that you speak, and Angela and I have also, we've all been on conferences together, but you, we know that you've gone and spoken all over the country, really have your finger on the pulse of what's going on, not only here in the state of Florida, which of course is your immediate sphere of influence, but certainly all over the country, which makes you a very valuable member of the team. So we thank you so much for all your efforts. And now we want to uh, go to Gilene because I'll tell you something, people, as we all know, you know, the, the, the black community, shall we say, in the United States of America is not monolithic. I mean, we are made up of so many different types of backgrounds. And of course, uh, the Caribbean uh, sector of our uh, diaspora, shall we say, uh, is very important to us. And so Gilene joined us. We, she's been all over the country uh, with the media that targets the Haitian community in particular in both English and in Haitian Creole. Thank you so much for joining us, Gilene. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, I studied in the court system as well. And to see that I'm surrounded by many attorneys uh, <laughs> when... <laughs> So uh, I was a court interpreter, and uh, I've seen people uh, that are facing marijuana charges, and now it has become legal. And it is such a great experience to see how people can use medical marijuana, which is a natural-based uh, plant that can help so many people get the health and the wellness that they deserve. And also now that I'm working with seniors um, because I do Medicare and I see how they can benefit from this, to me, it is just an, an opportunity to help other people without um, taking a pill that is gonna cause other issues, um, health issues, and bringing that into the Haitian community. Because so many times people uh, don't understand when they hear marijuana, they're like, oh, so many people have been uh, going to jail for this and that. So having a team as such to educate and also um, making awareness 
of what this can bring into their lives, I am happy and blessed to be part of this. And also how we get along and making sure that we give the right, the proper information. And since I've been on radio um, three years ago, I was part of the medical marijuana to bring awareness in the community. And when I become part of this a group, I'm like, oh my God, like this is amazing for people to see and understand why they need to be aware of certain things. They may choose not to take it, but at least we're bringing it to them. And I thank from you and Mary to make sure that people are aware of what uh, the resources that are available to them. And Sapasi Media is about educating and bring awareness and bring information to the community and educating them about opportunities that are there for them. So I am very happy to be part of this group, to be part of this team in making sure that we bring the information forward into the Haitian and Caribbean community. Thank well, we're you. so happy to have you and everybody. And what a great you yes. know, team we've been able to pull together to be able to educate and inform people about medical marijuana uh, the, its impact on their lives, the impact of unlawful marijuana, whether no matter what community you're from, we're on our way to you. We have another show that we're going to be starting. Uh, as we, you, talk, we, you heard from Gillian, you know she's doing the Haitian Creole show. We've got another Spanish language show that we'll be launching as well as a show that we're launching that's directed to the Asian community. And we think it's important uh, to be able to talk to these communities individually because everybody looks at weed a different way for different reasons. And in order to really reach them and educate them and get them to understand that this is actually a medicine that they should consider, you first have to understand why, what their barriers are to, be, to looking at it. And that's one of the things I think that all of us have done over the past year is really understand that and uh, to get a, get a handle on it, to be able to talk to people in a way that uh, we can get them to listen. And that's really all, like, once you listen, and once you find out what's going on, I don't, I don't know what your thoughts are, uh, Angela, as you take us to break, but once you, once people, you listen to them and you find out what their issues are, it's very easy to talk to them about and bring cannabis into their life. Would you agree? I agree wholeheartedly. And, and of course, when we know better, we do better. You know, whether we decide to use it or not, when we know better, we do better. What do your pastors say that? When you know better, you do better. <laughs> when you know better, you do better. You and go. we're going to do that. That's we're gonna Dr. Do Maya better. Angelou. Dr. Maya Angelou. Yeah. Via Oprah Winfrey. Yeah. Before you all go to break, let me say something. I think on behalf of all three of us, you, you, the two of you all, Angela and Carol, have put in a tremendous amount of work to build the infrastructure, the communications infrastructure for this organization. You've worked, I mean, so hard. We've seen you at, at the, at, at the uh, forums. We've seen you doing the radio shows. We've seen you, in, you know, on, on the, the meetings even before Zoom. And we just want to, we just want everybody to know that you all have put heart and soul into this project and that your, that your work has been, has, has, is not going unappreciated. You've been able to build essentially a, a statewide radio network from Tallahassee to Miami from scratch. Yes. Yes. With a tremendous That's amount of, of, of very high level content. Yeah. And, it's, and it's being spread on social media through all platforms. And I'm just telling you, man, y'all have done a tremendous job. I mean, the three of us are sometimes stand back in awe of what you have done. Well, we that's why we're with you, because we're in awe of what you guys have done. We're going to come back after the break and talk about it. But we thank everybody for staying with us on this edition of Mary Forum Radio, as well as Mary Videocast. And we'll see you in a second. Stay with us. Florida A&M University's Medical Marijuana Education and Research Initiative, or MARI, wants you to know we take your health seriously. That's why we bring you our neighborhood forums and our weekly Mary Forum radio program. During this coronavirus outbreak, remember to wash your hands often, clean and disinfect frequently used objects, and stay at home whenever possible. During this time of social distancing, the Mary will remain a resource. Visit our website, mmeri.famu.edu, to watch our forum videos, listen to our podcasts, and find airtimes for our weekly radio show. Mary, educating Floridians and minority communities about marijuana for medical use and the impact of the unlawful use of marijuana. Thank you for staying with us on Mary Form Radio and if you're watching on Mary Videocast. You have the Dynamic Five uh, for the Medical Marijuana Education and Research Initiative. I will tell you uh, if, if you don't know that you can find us on in 17 counties, go to our website, look in, to see where we're airing because we are out there and everywhere. Um, great dialogue 
about the the toiling for the last year yeah. and look 16 16 yeah. months yeah toiling <laughs> literally i mean when you have to create something from nothing because what well, I, I shouldn't say nothing because the florida state legislature gave us the funding we had the funding yes. but we didn't have a single shred of a because it never been done it's not you know it's not their fault it had never been done we this, executed with what we executed with a two sentence or one sentence legislative mandate, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I'm very, very proud of what we've been able to accomplish, frankly. You, you should be very proud of it. I, I mean, the fact that you took it from the legislation, brought it to execution, but beyond that, I, it's never been done before, but I don't think they'll be able to get rid of a program like this because the people want it, the people need it. So you're kind of setting the foundation for other spinoff programs that'll happen other copycat programs that'll happen. And we will welcome that because it just means the information's getting out. And that was your objective in the first place. And you guys have stayed consistent with that plan, getting knowledge to people, empowering people through information. And that's why everybody's talking about the show and also the face-to-face um, -face meetings. You know what's interesting? It's like, I, I Angela and I talk about this all the time, that we, didn't know it would be this much of an uphill climb, if you will, mm -hmm. to get people to be interested in trying medical marijuana. That was a weird thing. We thought, you know, everybody, everybody's been knowing about weed since the day they were born, probably. I don't care if you're 18 to 80. <laughs> and the bottom line is you would think that people would embrace it. But what we found, and, and I, I know we've had this conversation with you, with you as well, mm -hmm. is that you know, people don't just automatically go get medical marijuana. There's an, edu there's an information and education campaign that must precede it if you intend to penetrate that market. Yes, uh, in, in the, in particularly in the African-American community of, of, of across all cultures, there's a tremendous stigma as a consequence of, mm -hmm. of the criminalization of marijuana. And, I, and being a prosecutor in the 19, you know, 1980s, because I was at the time, I understand it completely because I saw it in the courtroom all the time. And that, that also made me want to come and be involved in this program because I had been on the other side of it. I had been on the criminal, the, the, on the, the criminal prosecution side of marijuana uh, and, and saw the, the evolution through normal and, and, and all the way up to, to now, uh, where, where, where now, but we, we're in a position, I think a unique position as a team to really begin to, to, to deconstruct that, that stigma. And I'm just so happy that, that again, that, that uh, you all have started that process and that uh, you've been able to do everything across all different platforms uh, and, and to allow from the, from the legislative pr perspective to, for the legislature and for the taxpayers to get the biggest bang for the buck in terms of, of, the, of, of the, yes. So, so, so you've been very efficient, very effective in getting that message out. So oh, the, return on investment, the return on investment is just, bar I, I, I can stand behind it <laughs> all day long, twice on Tuesday, for real. Mm -hmm. And I will say this really quickly, and, and Cheryl, I'm sorry to cut you off, but no, thank you for mentioning that, Charles, because, you know, this is uh, full disclosure. When I learned that I had the opportunity to work on this, I thought God has a sense of humor because I grew up 20 minutes north of Detroit. Uh, Carol is from the Detroit area. Um, it ravished and destroyed so many elements of my family that I thought, mm, drugs, no, no. So, you know, it, it was, it's been actually enriching for me personally mm -hmm. to work on this uh, campaign. And I think for all of us from experiences, we have children. Uh, Cheryl, I know you, you've been in the law. You've got an eight-year-old son. Yes. And my, my eight-year-old son, he knows all about cannabis. He knows um, about hemp. He knows about medical marijuana. And it's, it's normalized. And, you know, Angela, when you talk about it being a drug and, and being devastated, you know, when you, when you unpack that and look at, was it really a drug? Was it being used as a drug um, when you consider all the other drugs? So a lot of times it's kind of packaged with drugs that are harmful or even pharmaceutical drugs, or you don't have that stigma with um, prescribed medication. So we really have to not use, you know, generic terms when we look at it because it's so difficult, it has devastated our community as far as drugs overall. When you look at medical marijuana, it's something that's used to wean people off of those harmful drugs. And another point is, you know, being a cannabis and agricultural attorney, we always say that we're in the business of changing minds and hearts. So that stigma is so serious. And I can imagine um, in, in the Detroit area where, you know, there's a distinction as far as how people are treated, 
based on their race, based on their socioeconomic backgrounds. And that's really what devastates our community is the fact that I know that I'm going to be given, have the book thrown at me because of using this self-medicating, where someone who doesn't look like me will have a more lenient, um, a more lenient charge, more lenient sentencing, um, and they'll be looked at differently. If there's a mother, you know, there's a difference between uh, mom from mainstream communities versus um, a moms from underserved communities. And it's really unfortunate. So that's why we try to get rid of those stigmas. Absolutely. absolutely. And one last point as far as, you know, how, where the, with Charles saying he goes back to the, um, you know, 1980s prosecutions. Um, one of our guests that we have on the show is Dr. Henry Lowe. He is a Jamaican scientist, but he came out with the first approved cannabis medication in 1972. So we're going to explore and talk about, as, in 1972, as a Black man with something giving credit to medical marijuana as a medicine, you can imagine the stigma and the ostracization that he was facing as a professional. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Carol. I will, uh, I'm sorry, Cheryl, thank you for that. I will say one more thing on that. You know, the turning point for me was when I learned that there was an endocannabinoid system in my body and that there were receptors. And I thought, no, this is a, it's a plant, it's from the earth, this is real. Yeah. This, is, this is not a drug. That's right. Well, then what does it look like there in, in the Haitian community? Uh, in the Haitian community, because uh, everything, uh, the stigma of um, parents having their kids go into jail because of um, marijuana or weed, um, they do not see it the same way. And um, my mom, that is no longer now, and I was having a conversation uh, with a young person, and I was talking about how my mom was going through pain, and the, per the, the young person the, said, oh, why doesn't she try medical marijuana? Well, she's in, she was in Haiti back then. But a lot of times in our community, people do not understand that it's medical. It's not something that you take uh, or um, you just go and buy it because so many uh, of their families have been going to jail or uh, criminalized. So in, uh, that's why it's important to do the, the, the education that we're doing now to let people know about medical marijuana, what it's good for. Especially now, I know you guys went through a lot, but let's thank God because we are doing this in a time that is really needed because so many people are gonna need this after COVID-19 or while we're going through this. So this is perfect timing. We are gonna keep pushing this and also sharing um, information and knowledge with people and giving them an option between what they can use and how it's gonna affect them and medical marijuana, how it can help them do better and live longer, healthier. Absolutely, absolutely. And Newton said, Carol, that you know the anxiety levels are higher than, than right now. That we've all got higher anxiety just because we're living through COVID-19. Mm -hmm. you know, no fault of our own. We got to somehow survive it. Well, we want to thank everybody for joining us. Thank you so much. I, if we have a, round, a, a quick 10 second final comments from each person, if anyone would like to, ha to, to have a final comment, Charles. Glad to be here. Looking forward to spreading the word around the state uh, at all levels, among all communities, all underserved communities, and also in the mainstream community. Yes, because everyone needs this information. Yes. Everyone needs it. Cheryl? Yeah, I think uh, we want to make sure that there's access for patients. Patients are at the core of the medical marijuana industry and movement. So, and all the things that we're trying to do, our patients come first. And that's really why we do what we do as far as educating. Make sure the people who need it will have access to it. Thank you so much, Gillian. Knowledge is power. So let's get informed and also invest in our health. It is important that we know what's good, what's best, and how to uh, make good use of it. And thank you. You know, it's interesting. Knowledge is power for the consumer, as well as for the corporate, the business, the dispensary, the corporate giant, the educational institution. When the people are knowledgeable, that, that entity is in a, a better position, a more powerful position to serve that person. And I know, Angela, you have some final comments before you close this out. 
my only comment is to stay tuned because <laughs> we are just getting started and there is more great things to come. We are the dynamic five. <laughs> we're, we, we're doing it. We have done it. We're going to continue to do it. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. I'm Carol Angela Davis. Angela Hardiman. Gillen Berry. Charles W. Cherry II. And Cheryl Murray Powell Esquire. We'll see you next time.